In a move to increase its revenue generation target, the federal government has advised Nigerians to brace up for high prices of carbonated uh, beverages from January 2020, as there is no going back on plans to impose excise duties on them. While speaking at a public presentation and breakdown of the highlights of the 2022 appropriation bill, the Minister of Finance, uh, Zainab Ahmed, said these will be part of the additions in the 2021 Finance Act, which will take effect from January. Uh, although the journey to taxing carbonated beverages began in 2019 when Ahmed said the government was insistent on implementing the initiative at the World Bank International Monetary Fund meetings in Washington, D.C., United States. To make sense of these conversations, Mr. Uloshola Kupola is a business analyst and chartered accountant. He joins me now. Thank you so much for your time, for joining us here. Thank you very much for having me here. Yeah, I I'm sure you've been following the, of course, the reason given for, the first reason given is that the government intend to further use these to enhance independent revenue generation and also to optimize the operational efficiency uh, of revenue generation focused of uh, government. Uh, first, how would you respond to this? Well, uh, thank you once again for having yeah. me. Uh, you see, when you look at the, when the government is making policies, when they're making their policies, you want to look at the effect mm. of this policy on the general and on the generality of the people. Now, you see, increase of imposing taxes on goods and services is nothing new. It's something that every country we do to increase revenues and things. But you know, when you look at what time is it coming in and why, you see, uh, taxes on carbonated, carbonated uh, soft drinks, mm. you want to look at it that, you know, if the government is coming in from the position that, oh, for health reasons, just like we have in, uh, like in uh, Australia, in Germany, where they imposed a uh, higher kind of tax levels on carbonated soft drinks because of health reasons, stating that there are, uh, you know, uh, these are sugar-based products and increases the chances of diabetes and all these stuff on the citizenry, obesity mm -hmm. and things. You know, that was, that's one aspect. But when our government is talking about imposing this tax in order to increase revenue, my question is this. Have we exhausted every other means of increasing revenue? Sometimes ago, the, uh, the chairman of the Federal Revenue Service said, he said, Nigeria is losing about 5.4 trillion naira to tax evasion. Now, if you could give this kind of figure, that means you've done some work to arrive at that. How much are we going to be taxing the carbonated industry, uh, soft drinks, mm. to generate as much as the 5.4 trillion naira that is being lost through ev evasion, tax evasion. Mm. You, you will want to think that if it is the drive to increase revenue, then we should go after the 5.4 trillion. We should go after how do we, what are the things that we're going to do to m make sure that tax evasion is reduced and where is this, I, I didn't come up with that figure, they came up with that figure. Right. So they must have identified some loopholes in the economy, some loopholes in the operations where this money is going to. I think more energy should have been put in that aspect mm -hmm. to recover or to make sure that they kind of recoup this kind of money than to put uh, to further levy tax on carbonated mm -hmm. sub, uh, carbonated drinks. Drinks, yeah. You understand? I, I think the, 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 you talked about health issues. I, I, they are also, according to her, they are also factoring that aspect to him. Uh, but then the second reason they are also giving is the fact that if uh, alcoholic drinks were tasked by 30%, then um, they see no reason why non-alcoholic drinks shouldn't be tasked. Okay. All, all right. Let, let's look at it from this point. Again. That's the second reason. The second reason. Now, you, let's look at the, the, the health aspect was not emphasized. 
Yes, it, they didn't. They didn't. Of course, it's involved. It's part of it. It's <laughs> part of it. We assume it's part of it. <laughs> no, it, it's. It's. Uh, I mean, the the report is uh, is there. Um, let Let me quote the the Minister of Finance. Okay. It says, the government's decision is pro health related, according to the statement. Say the introduction of new and further increases in existing pro health taxes. For example excise duties on carbonated drinks which means they are also factoring the health the, part uh, on okay. it again now let's know. look at let, let's what, but, what but the start? question is is this enough let, let's look at you know i've given you that base that we right. ca we, we, we can generate more money outside this particular because if you compare what have we exhausted how we want to or what we need to do to bring in money then to it's not just taxing a particular line of product. Now, let's look at this, uh, the effects or some of these things, why for some, uh, for some individuals, we feel this might not be the best thing or, or the best time to go. Now, this is a period we just go, this is a post-COVID period where companies and industries are trying to revive and, you know, get better. Now, when you impose taxes, you should know that the end uh, user is a, uh, the end consumer is the one that is going to be paying it. Of course, the carbonated industries, the and uh, the companies themselves, they will transfer this tax burden to the consumers. Now, who are these consumers? Are they the consumers that have been helped by the economy of this nation? Are they the consumers that are the, the people that are still trying to struggle to make ends meet after the effect of what are the palliatives that have been given after? The COVID. Now, look at, for many nations and countries, they are looking at how do we alleviate the sufferings of the people. Do you know what this we, we, bring, uh, we bring about? One, the moment this tax is increased, you know that a lot of Nigerians are on the street there that sell these carbonated drinks as a means of livelihood. And there are a lot of people that, you know, sometimes people think, uh, soft drinks or carbonated drinks are lo they are not luxuries. I remember mm. way back <laughs> when I used to uh, board the buses and things. When you are hungry, you are calculating instead of you going to uh, this uh, ca uh, cafeteria local, or local, local, local you know. If I take a gala and a coke, wow! I think I'm filled. I'm going to save some money and things. And that's how people live around. That's mm. why you see them on the street now. Once the prices increase, there will be re reduction in the spending of people. People will not want to, uh, most of the people will not want to buy these products mm. again. Or th not that they won't want to buy, there will be reduction in spending. And once there's reduction in spending, that means the revenue generation of the companies in question will be reduced. It will affect their profit generation ability. And once that is hampered, what will happen, they will start thinking of how do we maintain profit? How do we remain profitable? The next thing will be, can we downsize? Can we right size? Can we reduce our workforce? And then workforces in the organizations begin to reduce. Just look at that one single thing, which is not even absolutely necessary. It's not that it is abnormal. I, I would tell you, like, if you look at tax regimes and on consumables and things, it, it is true Nigeria has one of the least when you talk about um, consumable tax on products and services, right. like I think we, VAT is the closest one that we can look at because when you talk of v uh, tax on consumables, they come in different forms, excise duties, VAT, sales tax, and all these things. Now, if you look at worldwide, uh, in Africa, Nigeria has at least 7.5. Right. The, the, at VAT. We have countries that are going as much as 20%. Mm. 19%. But I think that's what yeah. the federal government is looking at, doing a, a comparative analysis with other countries to see how they can maximize, uh, you know, the, this now, aspect you know, when of we, when revenue we're making, generation. When we're making such comparison, making it as a base, that should, that, I don't think that should be absolutely right. Now, you look at what is the population of those countries as compared to us. You could, you could charge VAT of 20% 20, 20 on your goods and services and the total revenue that will be generated from that could be less than a billion but where you have 200 million people and you are even charging 7.5 you could generate more 
revenue. Then mm. you want to say, okay, we have more people right. to take care of. Mm. Let, let me quickly come in now. How do you think you, you've thrown up a lot of issues and how it will impact into different sectors, even on ordinary, the businesses, ordinary man in the street and all of that? How do you think we can harmonize all of this that you've narrated? Uh, do you think the federal government should go ahead? Because it seems like what the Minister of Finance said, there's no going back on the plan. Uh, just like I said, the, it is, um, you know, for the ministers and the people, the policy makers, they will have thought of a lot of things. And I, would, I don't always like to say government policy, uh, doing this is wrong, but should, we should be asking, is this the right time? Mm. Should it be now? For in my own opinion, I don't think this is the best time to do it. Mm. Because now you are trying, it's going to affect the, the industry's concerns. Some companies are just coming up. That I, I remember I had the privilege of working with one of these carbonated uh, com, um, produce, uh, producing drinks Co company, producing company mm. way back. And uh, I was working in the north then. Then that was the advent of, that, that was a period when this uh, product, Zobo, started. And I remember we were having a management meeting, and at that management meeting, sales are dropped. And then the, the, country, man, the country manager was talking to the sales manager, manager at the meeting. He said, why have we dropped in the sales? And one of the reasons that the man gave, he said, one, um, the, the Hamilton season and things, okay. Then he said, we have a very big competitor I so said, what was, what, what was that? He said, the Zobo drink. Mm. Apparently, you know, it was new then. People had said, right. people, the Zobo drink was not well packaged prior to that period. But people had started packaging it. So in the north, there's a, so this product is a competition. And do you know what? Because there was reduction. I'm just using that particular instance. Right. Because there was a reduction in the revenue, a lot of the people, most of the casual staffs that we were using then, mm. we had to lay them off. Just, I'm not, we are not talking so, so, of so, so, so just, With know. this narration now, do you see a kind of laying off, a kind of reduction patronages dropping significantly uh, as a wrap up? I, I, I tell you, this is what was going to happen in the long run. Mm. Why? You don't get up in the morning and say you are going to drink I'm going out, I want to take a... But do you think are the companies ready to uh, go through this? Uh, the companies, it might not be the challenge for the companies. It's for the consumers. Once the companies get it, they're going to transfer it. It is not just one company. It's a general, it's, 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 general, it's going to be across, all, across, across all. all of them. Now, once it's across board, so this company will increase, all of them will increase. So it's not the issue of maybe if this one increases, this one. So it's going to affect all of them. Mm. So the burden is now on the taxpayer, on the consumer. So you see people, a lot of people will reduce the consumption of this product. And because it's reduced, <laughs> revenue is reduced. And then it, God help them. Most of them, you will hear most of them will start packing up because they can't meet up. Interesting. I think we need to leave it there. Uh, Olusha Lapopola, business analyst, chartered accountant. Thank you for coming on Business Breakfast. It's a, it's, it's a privilege. I, I always like to be on the program anytime.